What's up everyone here and I think you make this video party. I am so excited to upload this one for you guys because this video we're back with the next chapter of the Shield Hill franchise with season 3 of The Rising of the Shield Hero. So this is something I've been looking forward to for a long time given how I really love the first season and I gotta admit I was a little bit disappointed with season 2 and I would have made a video about that but by the time the season was ending I got COVID so I never really got around to making a video for season 2 but one of the things I love about this third season is that you really don't have to watch season two as it basically fills you in on all the important details that you missed so that you can go straight to season three. So you could say that you could skip season two and go straight to season three. But anyway, going into this third season, I was really hoping for that we would get a full 24 episode season rather than it just being only 12 episodes long. And based on what we saw in the trailers, I was really excited that this season was going to focus on a big underground fight club tournament arc. Well, unfortunately, season three is only 12 episodes long and yeah, that tournament arc, yeah, that gets quickly resolved in about three episodes and I was a bit shocked on how fast that actually happens. But on the bright side, we do get to meet seven new characters who are pretty badass from the get-go because most of the new characters we meet in this third season are actually demi-human and I love how the story just goes nuts on giving us different animal characters with different abilities. And I gotta tell you, my three new favorite characters in this season are two tigers and a killer whale. And without giving any spoilers, there's something about these two tiger characters that the story just teases that makes this season all the more interesting. I just wish that this season was more than 12 episodes because I'm tired of popular anime only getting 12 episodes just so they could stretch the franchise for as long as possible. But anyway, what really caught me by surprise was how this third season is basically a wake up call to most of the characters that we disliked in season one. And I love how in season three, there are several episodes tied to the cardinal heroes who are struggling in their own way. And as you go throughout the season, you watch them come to terms of how things went down in season one and season two before starting to take responsibility for their actions and then begin their redemption arc. I mean, honestly, this third season should have been labeled as the rising of the four heroes because each of these cardinal heroes endures the same kind of treatment that Naofumi went through in season one before they soon come to terms of what they did was wrong and soon rise up and become the heroes they were meant to be. This is basically their comeback season. Another thing that I like about this season is how we get some of the best fights we've seen in this franchise so far because if you look at season 3 in comparison to seasons 1 and 2, the animation has just gotten better over the years and when season 3 the fights are so well animated that they just come to life on screen. Also, if we're comparing each season, season 3 feels like a soft return to season 1 in terms of having an antagonist to propel the story and make things more interesting because if you look back at season 1, Woof, I remember literally getting hard enough to deal with the antagonists of that first season. But once we got into season two, I wasn't fully interested in the main villain as he was trying too hard to be the villain and the way that character was written was too much. But once we get into season three, once we're introduced to the main driving force that is basically uniting our heroes together, Oh my god, I could not believe that I got heartburn again as I felt an old flame of hatred ignite in my heart. I remember looking at my brother and was basically, Oh my god, my chest hurts. I can't breathe. Do something. Help me! So if you were to compare the antagonists of each season, season 1 antagonists were super manipulative while in season 2 the main villain was pretty sadistic and rageful while in season 3 the main antagonist is very manipulative and that just makes this third season feel like we're going back to the same kind of tone that we got in season 1. But just when things were about to get interesting, the season was over and I gotta tell you, I felt like a little bit of a low blow because after getting so invested in this story, I was very upset to see the season end so quickly. However, I will say I am very happy to see the series is finally turning the same kind of tone that made us fall in love with the franchise, and I am very excited to see where the story is going to take us next. So overall, I really enjoyed season 3 as it is a huge step up from season 2 given how we're not only introduced to new characters who are instantly cool from the get go, but some of our old characters start to begin their redemption arc and despite being only 12 episodes long, this season is super easy to binge through. So if you're looking for something to watch right now, maybe you should check out this anime. Well that's going to do for this video guys, that was my overall review on the Rising of the Shield Hero Season 3. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button so you always upload from this channel, I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Bye-bye.